Hi, this is Josh. I'm a pharmacist with PharmacistTips.com. Here we're going to talk quickly today about pre-diabetes blood sugar levels. Talk about the, the levels uh, when you test your blood sugar, what is considered pre-diabetic. Remember, this is all general information. You always want to talk to your doctor for a diagnosis. This is not intended to treat or diagnose any conditions. So what is pre-diabetes? What the what is it? It's impaired fasting glucose. That means your blood sugar is high when you're fasting. For most people, that's the uh, first thing when we wake up in the morning, we haven't eaten for at least eight hours. Or impaired glucose tolerance. That means how your body processes blood sugar after eating. And when you're pre-diabetic, of course, that puts you at risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And diabetes uh, puts you at higher risk of other health problems, puts you at higher risk of cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure, a laundry list of health conditions. So if possible, you know, we want to prevent this from developing into full-blown type 2 diabetes. So what are the blood sugar levels? The fasting levels uh, are generally considered 100 to 125 milligram per deciliter. That's how we measure blood sugar here in the U.S. Uh, other parts of the world use millimole per liter, and so that's 5.6 to 6.9. And two hours after eating, or if you go to the doctor, they may do a glucose tolerance test. You're looking at 140 to 199 two hours after eating, or uh, 7.8 to 11. So that the two hours after eating that shows how good your body is. It, processing blood sugar. Of course, the fasting is how well your body processed the sugar overnight or how it dealt with the load from the previous day. Now, remember, one reading does not diagnose, and this is something you'd want to talk to your doctor about, but these are the generally considered um, the levels which diagnose prediabetes. Very slightly from different organizations, but usually in this ballpark. A1C is a test that your doctor may do. That is a 6 to 6.4 typically is a considered pre-diabetes. Put this in perspective, right here is pre-diabetes, and of course anything above that, you know, 126 and greater fasting. Again, that would be typically your morning reading that would put you at a type 2 diabetic and 200 milligram per deciliter after eating considered uh, type 2 diabetes. Normally, we'd like to see that in 100, uh, 70 to 100, uh, right in the 80s is the sweet spot for a lot of folks, first thing in the morning, two hours after eating, well, less than 140. And if you get the A1C measured at your doctor's office, 6% or less. Can we prevent type 2 diabetes when we're pre-diabetic? Absolutely. I've seen it go both ways in the pharmacy. I've seen some people uh, it was a wake-up call for them, so they made some lifestyle changes, and their blood sugar uh, went back to normal. And other people, unfortunately, it went the other way. But some, what are some things we can do? Uh, weight loss has been shown to prevent or um, slow the development of type 2 diabetes. Quality sleep. This is one we don't focus on enough. Uh, really, a good solid eight hours in the sack uh, can do a lot to prevent for your blood sugar. I've noticed this myself. I am, I'm not diabetic, but I don't ever want to be diabetic. So I do check my blood sugar on a regular basis just to notice trends. And if I have not gotten enough sleep, my blood sugar reading first thing in the morning is at least 10 points higher. It's amazing how quickly um, lack of sleep can affect your blood sugar. And the interesting thing is uh, studies have shown if you don't get good sleep, you make poor food choices and consume more calories the next day. So it, it could be a vicious um, circle you get stuck in. If you're not sleeping well, it's just really hard to get your blood sugar where they need to be. Of course, dietary changes. Uh, we want to consume fewer calories. You know, that's going to help us. Type 2 diabetes, really, it, it happens to um, uh, people in countries where food is plentiful and inexpensive and it's easy to over consume, consume more calories than we need day in and day out for decades, that kind of wears on the body. And so if we can find a way to consume fewer calories, oftentimes that type two diabetes will resolve. You of course want to talk to your physician before you make any dietary changes, but uh, that can have a tremendous effect on type two diabetes. And if you're at really high risk or if you're at close to becoming diabetic, sometimes they may prescribe medications like metformin or acrobose. Um, typically metformin, it, it again, it depends how close you are to being diabetic or you know your other risk factors. Um, and you can get off 
the metformin if you lose weight, get your blood sugar under control and things like that. Again, that's up to you and your physician. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, remember, I always talk to your doctor or your primary care provider with any questions about that. It, uh, we are lucky that uh, inexpensive glucose monitoring systems exist, so we can sort of monitor these things home at home and track our progress. Um, so that uh, you, if you have health insurance, they may even cover that for you. And go ahead and ask any questions in the comments below. Uh, I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.